Hello, this is uh, vlog six, I think, and um, it's four in the morning, um, and that will tie into a lot of what I'll be talking about today. Um, this isn't a research channel, so like I don't have anything scientific to offer you. Um, I read some of the papers, I know some of the science behind MECFS and the comorbidities and whatnot, but uh, for the most part, um, this is just for me to uh, catalog what I'm going through, which is very difficult. Um, I mean, it could always be worse, but like that doesn't ever comfort me ever. Like when people are like, well, you could be homeless and you could be have no family support. It's like, yeah, it's like you, that would be bad for any situation, wouldn't it? Uh, I was like, yeah, it's particularly bad for MECFS, but it's like not, those are like, basic things that yeah i guess some people don't have so it's kind of like i'm not gonna like torture myself over like oh i'm so privileged because i have uh some resources <laughs> why would i ever put that on myself as like that whole the whole intersectionality thing is is like just tormenting for people right it's like uh, understand that people's material interests are um not chosen for them right People, like, people used to break my balls about that a lot uh, growing up even. Like, it's like, you you should be lucky. You were born into a middle-class family. And I was like, okay. <laughs> what else do I have to be lucky or feel, feel lucky about? That I wasn't born in, like, uh, the Gaza Strip or something either? And I was like, yeah, I know. It's fucking, it's, it's yeah, I, I don't think about it, right? doesn't mean I'm not aware of other things or other people's plight, Right. Uh, I mean, that's not what this vlog is really about, but like, I, I can't, I can't really tolerate that shit anymore. It's just, it's, it's obscene to me. Even as someone who's disabled, and I've been like, wow, well, it's like, there's all kinds of, you should be, as a disabled person, you should also be aware of that people with disabilities, it, it, there's a, it, it, it's, it's tiered at the level of race and sexuality and gender. And it's like, I, I get that. I understand that. It's like, it doesn't have anything, it doesn't make my disease any fucking worse or lesser than anyone else's. Right. And so it's like, if it's like, a, so if like, a, if like a, <laughs> To use the most uh, extreme example, like if if there's a disabled woman who's black and homeless and whatever, and she has MECFS, and what am I supposed to do? Sit there and go like, "What? Well, thank God I'm not her." It's like, isn't that worse? <laughs> you know, um, uh, it's like, no, I acknowledge it exists. I'm not going to waste the limited energy I have, like guilt tripping myself <laughs> over that I have the ability to do this or I have some energy, you know. Yeah, there are people on the severe the, the severity spectrum of this that are doing far worse than I am, right? Uh, although I am just part of this vlog is like how this sleep and getting worse, and um, also the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, I didn't put it in the. Uh, let me make it. I guess I can change it now. Hold on, sleep. words and jealousy sleep getting worse and jealous jealousy over what you might ask well i mean of things that people can do and i can't right so the sleep issue is that i'm going to bed at my i've totally reversed my sleep cycle right i, I mean i it was okay for a little while 2022 i for the beginning of 2022, when I first got sick, um, I um, couldn't sleep at all. I would wake up every like hour or half hour or 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Now I can kind of sleep through the night mostly, but it's like really intense, vivid dreams, like uh, very like subconscious, traumatic stuff, um, stressful as all hell. And then when I do get up, I'm still tired. So, like, I, I fell asleep at, like, 8 in the morning last night or last yesterday or, yeah, whatever. And um, I got up at 8.30 at night. I had gotten up a few times between there because, like, uh, someone had brought my dinner in, but, like, at, like, 5 maybe. But I didn't get up. And so, like, I slept for 12 and a half hours, basically, on and off. And so now I've been up since only, I've only been up eight hours. It feels like I've been up forever, but I've only been up for 
less than eight hours and I'm tired. Um, and this is what's well, the reason why I have to do this vlog sometimes too, is that this is the first time I've spoken in like a couple of days. I don't talk to anyone, you know, it's just like sleep. I'm up. I'll watch some things. Um, you know, I usually have to like ice down the back of my neck a lot and my stuff because it's not that it burns or anything. It's just that it gets so warm and it gets so um, sore that uh, I don't know. There's, there's also like this pressure in my head. So like, you know, I, I think there's maybe like maybe there may be some intracranial uh, hypertension or hypotension, whichever one it is. And there may be something to do with like maybe some jugular vein compression or something to do with something like my veins are compressed or something along those lines. Um, although usually you have other symptoms with that, like sometimes like your vision will be blurry or whatnot, or you'll have headaches or whatever. But I do do get I do I'm getting a lot more neck soreness and ach achiness there, so that's been awful. But my sleep is terrible, and it's the thing that I used to dread doing a lot because um night especially when i got my sleep back on track like in 2022 and i was pacing a lot like pretty religiously um i would i would do very little throughout the day and i would rest a lot and i would just like maybe do a couple of things and then i would go to sleep around midnight like consistently get up i don't know like four or five maybe sometimes and then i would sleep on and off for like the last hour on and off hour 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 that's how it is kind of now like i'll sleep for like six hours and it'll just be like another hour another hour another hour another hour another hour etc um which is frustrating and i'm i'm, I'm so i'm thinking maybe I, I what am i i'm i have to get back on some sort of like regular schedule if i can because if i if falling asleep used to be my biggest bane in my existence even before i got sick for four years, I was suffering from chronic insomnia, like the worst insomnia you can think of. Like this, go I would go days without sleeping. It was, it was dreadful, and that, I think that's what contributed to probably getting sick. Um, and so I am getting slightly worse, um, and I think part of it is my fault. I think. And I don't want to put too much of that on myself, but a part of it is my fault because I'm just not pacing well enough, and I haven't prioritized like what I want to. Like I, I have, I'm just thinking so short term, because, like you know, it's a cruel illness because long term you can't see yourself having a life, but short term you're like, well, I want to, do, I got to do something, right? And so, when I first got sick, I, I really had it in my mind, okay, long term, I just want to preserve my health what's left of it right so i'll in the short term i'm just going to do everything i can and i did get i did get slightly better and i didn't know what really to, to attribute it to other than maybe probably just rest really i mean really just pay, the rigorous pacing and like shoving off all my responsibilities onto other people and just outsourcing everything that i could right down to paying my credit card bills and stuff. I was like, I gave all my passwords to my mom and I said, just handle it all for me if you can. Any email that you get, whatever. Any doctor's appointment I don't need to make, I don't need to do on my own, whatever. Uh, you ha I give her, she's my medical proxy. So like, um, yeah, I just outsourced everything. Um, so now I'm thinking I might have to go back to doing a lot more pacing and I think what's going to help with that maybe is I'm going to have to really prioritize like what's important so like if I did this once a week it wouldn't be like the end of the world obviously but then I'd have to think okay what's not important like maybe watching so much YouTube <laughs> is not so important or like watching things that I like or TV shows or something or whatever because like you just get bored right maybe going for a walk once or twice a week, if I can, is more important than doing other things. And then maybe rest is also important. Rest is still doing something. Like I had that in my head the first year and then it just went away. So I have to get back onto that, but I am getting worse because the symptoms are just getting worse and I feel sometimes I'll feel short of breath. 
<laughs> and then sometimes I'll I just feel a lot more like psychiatric symptoms that I didn't have before. Um, like uh, feel them just like disreality or 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 um, in general not feeling like um, uh, I have control over like my thoughts. Um, just feeling frightened, I think, a lot more often than usual, like not being able to control my fear or some of my paranoias. Um, sleep in the, in the meld between like sleep and reality have sometimes blurred over because of the time distortion and um, when I'm going to bed and when I'm waking up, sometimes I'll wake up, you know, it's dark. I go to bed when it's light. It's so it's like there's just a lot of things, and that and everyone else's schedule is different than mine now. Uh, so it's I don't ever see anyone, basically. Like my dad called this morning at ten in the morning or something when you know when I checked my phone, and I, I didn't bother wind up calling him back because by the time I got up it was already late, and so it's like there's just a lot, and so that leads me kind of like to the jealousy point, and I just. You know, I see people still just like doing normal things, and I don't know. I just get very jealous because I just like I just wish I could just do just anything, regular, normal stuff. Like I wish I could just smoke a joint and just like watch TV, but I don't because I I haven't had I haven't smoked at all since I've been sick, and I haven't had a drink since 2020 when the pandemic began. I was like, well, I was like, I was like, I went out, I remember it was right before the pandemic and I went out with a colleague um, and um, we went out to, uh, my colleague is someone I, 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 I work with um, on my blog with, I, the, you, none of you know about my blog, it doesn't matter. But, um, and uh, he had a blog and was like, we should meet and talk because we have similar ideas. And so we met and, we, and that was the last time I had a beer. And, um, yeah. And so just even being able to do something like that, like, you know, I was, I was watching, what was I watching? I was watching, um, that guy, Seth Meyers, who I guess hosts a late night show and he was, he was doing something where he was going like day drinking with celebrities or something, some sort of, some sort of skit, and I was like, I wish I could just get smashed, you know, and hammered, you know, <laughs> or something like that, you know, and just go out and do something normal, you know. I'm still very COVID cautious, even I know even people are like, well, what do you, what's why, why are you being so cautious or whatever? Still, because it's like, well, first of all, I don't want to get sicker than I already am. And secondly, it's just because it's like I, I feel like not getting sick is a good thing. I don't know when that became like popular choice to became like well, it's fine. Like it's it, it, that was kind of interesting to me that the whole like uh, dynamic of like well, the same people who like did not listen to the CDC or the WHO or whatever whom, or whom, or the public health officials are now like citing them as like well, no, it's fine, you know. And then the same and the same people who did listen to them are also citing them, you know, because. You, as as the um, as the requirements for like what happens when after you get sick are slowly been drop, you know, because it's everything's in uh, uh, politically motivated to just get people back to work. So like that was like or not or not work from home as, uh, as well. So like that became like a something that I was very wary of, was, which is like, well, I'm not going to just give up my health because everyone else decided like they don't give a shit about theirs but then on the other hand like i'm also like sort of envious that people can just get sick like multiple times and like nothing have nothing happened to them either whereas like i don't even remember getting a virus i saw a poll on um uh reddit and twitter and it was um you know 75 percent of people who had mecfs the trigger of the virus right that they can remember which is about in line with the statistics, right? But I can't remember what mine was at all. It also makes me kind of like envious and jealous because like I don't even know what would solve my problem. I don't know what the root cause of my issues are and I don't know what would solve them. I don't know what would 
uh, like they're always talking about like, well, you know, they're testing this drug or that drug, or maybe they're they've looked into like this part of the you know the anatomy that maybe have some sort of you know with Ron Davis and stuff. They're like, oh well, you know, it could be the um, uh, you know the, I, I I can't remember what it is the um, uh, iconic I, iconic shunt or whatever it is whatever I, I can't remember how, uh, the, this his work with Robert Fair. Um, or it could be an autoimmune uh, component, or it could be, you know, autoantibodies, or it could be, it's like, well, what if I don't have any of that? You know? So there's some, like, envy there about, like, at least, well, people maybe had some sort of viral reactivation. It's like, well, maybe they can address that. Uh, I'm not saying it would be easy. I'm just saying that, like, that, that if there's some sort of innate immune autoimmune response that's happening constantly in the body maybe they have some way of shutting it off or something for those people or they'll develop something but if what if you what if yours isn't that right what if you fall into some sort of other subcategory so that's all i really have to say i mean my sleep is shit i'm gonna feel worse and then it's compounded by just um feeling somewhat acrimonious over the uh the fact that uh, I can't do normal things anymore like I used to. And um, it's an awful feeling because um, you just feel like you're missing out on so much and you feel like there's no urgency for anyone to give a shit and you can't do anything about it. It's 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 a, it's a terrifying feeling you know, that you, uh, of helplessness uh, that you can't do anything. Um, it's like being just entombed, basically. Like, just... Uh, I have a lot of. I think I think that was a big fear, really big fear of mine before I got sick. Was but part of my health anxiety was getting something like a terminal illness or something or some or some other disease which, which was progressive, um, because then you couldn't do anything about it, and um, you would just. I, I knew I was never come to terms with it because um, I had always had like uh, a lot of existential issues with about life and death and stuff like that and so like i would always i would always struggle with those kinds of questions especially around mortality and so like i was like oh well, there's nothing i can do about it and it's like what do i do it's like so well at least i could distract myself until the inevitable happens and then like now you really can't do that with mecfs because there's, there's nothing to distract you there the symptoms are always there they never abate and when the, even on your best day, it's still fucking shit, right? Your worst days suck, are, are absolutely just dreadful. And your best days absolutely um, are just, you, you, just, you don't want to exist some days. You know, you just don't want, you don't, you want it to just, you, you can't escape anywhere. I can't, like, 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 I can't escape and sleep. I can't escape anywhere, <laughs> you know? So, when I was when I used to have depression, at least when I I could go to bed and I can sleep, and then it would just disappear for nine hours or eight hours or whatever, and it was fine. And now I can't even do that because it's just uh, I have extremely vivid nightmares and dreams, and it's just terrifying. So, if anyone else is dealing with that, I would I empathize with you, and um, and uh, you know, they have this unite. 24 uh, United Fight 2024 coming up and um, next month, and I don't think it's going to lead to jack shit. It's just like, how many conferences do we fucking need? And it's like, I I promoted it, but like, just out of like sheer, like, whatever, it's the bare minimum I could do. But it, we need drug trials, we need immediate emergency authorization of drugs repurposing for so we can get just try it on people like there is not one person with MECFS who would not be willing to try anything at this point I don't think it's like yeah could it make you worse but like I don't know I think this we need a lot of drug trials right now and I'm I'm in an I live I happen to live in a state where there's a lot of hospitals and we could really benefit from I would be in front I would be on the front line even if it got me wor way worse I don't care I'll try it you know, like I have a whole bunch of fucking drugs that like I was prescribed, but I didn't try because well, not a lot of fucking 
in data or information on it, right? But they they they, they gave they have a doctor who just kind of like has a <laughs> uh, uses his his RX pad is sort of like a uh, a you know um, like he's doing like a, like a free form poetry on it or some shit, and uh, he he's willing to. Um, prescribe a lot of stuff that like it's kind of like eh, maybe it'll work unlikely right there's just not enough information or data because it's not going to be one fucking thing it's going to be like a whole bunch it's either going to be a whole bunch of things at the beginning or it's going to be some sort of evolutionary leap in some sort of uh, form of technolo technology technology sort of like cart therapy uh, is for autoimmune conditions and cancers right that's like the new trend uh um or what they're doing in europe which is like removing auto antibody productions from certain if you have certain um the the right gen genetic makeups or if, if you're if you're producing them that is right um so unless that happens i just there, it's just very frustrating like trying to tr keep trying things i think if anything i've scaled back on the law and I don't find any correlation or causation between me scaling back on the amount of supplements I'm taking and, or the amount of like medications I'm taking versus like how bad I'm feeling. I'm feeling, I, I know I'm feeling worse because I'm just overdoing it every day um, cognitively. That's why I'm feeling it from here on up mostly. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, uh, I'm not even like jealous of like people getting to do like normal life stuff really. I'm really just jealous of like like, you know, like having a family or a home or whatever. I'm more jealous of just, like, doing a normal thing, like going for a walk in the park or, like, just taking the train somewhere. You know, I, I live right near the train track, so it's, like, like just taking uh, the train. And I used to just take the train to ride it and just go, like, read something on the train. Because I, I would take the train, I would take the train, you know, inbound to like Boston or something like that, and just take a whole bunch of connectors and around the, you know, just and just ride it around and just sort of uh, read things on the train, because it was like a, it was it was relatively like quiet place to do it, and it's the cheap one of the cheapest places you can do it in. You know, you can ride the subway pretty much infinitely for like two dollars um, if you really wanted to. So. Um, or like have like a I had or in my case I had I had a a, a pass from my uh, the school I worked at, and so like I would just you know it was just free for me to do it. So those are the things that I'm really jealous of, like that people get to do that. You know I'm not jealous about like I don't get to travel. Of course I would love to get dressed to continue to travel, but like since I don't have any kids or family, like that's like something that I was going to prioritize. You know, and then the, then the pandemic happened, and then. Everything kind of got fucked up for a couple of years, and then. Uh, so, anyways, I'm not feeling well. I feel like shit. I need a three out of ten, two out of ten right now. Um, so I'm gonna go, and uh, that's all I have to say.